Today I'm going to be reviewing the power meter solar charge controller. This is a 10 amp boost solar charge controller. I don't know how to pronounce this. Is it power meter or power mister? I'm just going to call it power meter from now on. Here is the specs of the solar charge controller. It can put out 10 amp of current and the voltage can be variable between 24 to 72 volts. This is not a fixed voltage. It's fully adjustable to any voltage that you desire. And that's why this is perfect for charging lithium ion batteries. So in this video, I'm going to show you what it is, how to use it, and I'm going to tear it down and show you what's inside. My main reason to buy this charge controller is to charge my electric bike. So I'm going to hook it up to my electric bike to see how well it works. It's got four button control, two input for solar and battery. It does not have an output. And there is a square here that is supposed to be a USB port, I would say, but uh, there's no USB port on this charge controller. On the back is a aluminum heatsink. Let me plug in my solar panel and my battery and turn it on and show you how to use it. The solar panel I'm using is a 12 volt 130 watt flexible solar panel. The open circuit voltage of this solar panel is about 22 volts. And the battery I'm using is a cobalt 40 volt power tool battery. And this one is a 10S battery pack. It max out at 42 volts when it's fully charged. Here it is. The solar panel is hooked up to the controller and is showing 22.6 volts. You can see it has a beautiful color screen. And this is the backlight off. If I press enter, the backlight is on and it's even brighter. You can see that it's showing, that it's charging the battery right now. But the thing is, I have not hooked up to my battery yet but it's already charging the battery so that is not accurate at all in the user manual it says that you have to hook up the battery first before the solar panel but when I hook up the battery first the screen does not turn on I found out that the unit will only turn on when you hook up the solar panel and that doesn't matter if the battery is installed or not it needs power from the solar panel for the unit to turn on. And when the unit is on, I can adjust all of the charging parameter before I hook up my battery. So let's go ahead and go through setup first. Press the program button. D01 is the open circuit voltage of your solar panel. And my panel puts out 22 volts open circuit, so I put 24 volts. This has to be as close to your solar panel output as possible. If this number is much higher or much lower than your actual solar panel output, then it will not charge your battery. So you have to adjust this number closer to your solar panel open circuit voltage. Press the arrow up. We got D02. That is for lithium ion battery charging. The voltage shown here is the maximum voltage this charger is going to put out to charge your battery. My battery here is a 40 volt battery and at maximum charge it's 42 volts. So I have to set my voltage down to 42 volts. So I'm going to press enter and then arrow down, press and hold and we will go faster than if you just press one click at a time. To make your battery last longer, you should charge it a little bit lower than 42. So I'm gonna do it at 41 and a half. Next, D03. This is a float charging voltage. This only applies to lead acid battery. It doesn't apply to lithium ion battery. So I'm gonna set this voltage exactly at 41.2 volts as D02. Press enter and then arrow down and go down to 41 and a half. There we go. D02 and D03 are the same. Next is D04. This is a return to MPPT charging. 
So when you use a battery and it drops below a certain voltage, the controller will automatically charge the battery back up. I'm not sure how useful the DZ4 feature is, but this is what it says in the manual. So when your battery drops below a certain voltage, the controller will enter a new charging cycle to charge the battery. I'm just going to set it to, let's say, 35 volts. 35 volts. And that's 3.5 volts per cell for this battery. D05 is a maximum charging current. This charger can do up to 10 amps. Because I have a small solar panel and it doesn't go up to 10 amps, so I don't have to limit the current to charge this battery. So I don't have to worry about that. But if you have a bigger solar system and it puts out more current than your battery can handle, then you have to limit your current output here. In this case, I have a small solar panel, so I don't have to worry about it putting too much current to my battery. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at 6 amp. That is the default uh, current coming from the manufacturer. D06 is for calibrating the voltage of your battery to match with the charge controller. This is the case where your battery voltage that shows on your meter does not match the voltage shows on here. Right now it shows 26 volt because I have not connected my battery yet. Let's go ahead and hook up the battery. I'm using a homemade adapter here that uh, put out an XT60 connector so I can connect to my charge controller. The battery voltage right now showing on my voltmeter is 38.7 volts. Let's go ahead and hook it up. You see it shows here 45.2, so that's not accurate at all. We're going to reduce it to 38.7. There we go. 38.7. Now we go back to charging. And you can see it's charging right now. Let's see what we got one point about one amp 1.2 amps 50 56 watts right now all right i have just come out and readjust the angle of the solar panel and uh, we're getting a little bit more power 74 watts right now 1.8 amps i have tried this around noon time and i got between 90 to 100 watts for a 130 watt solar panel, that is pretty good efficiency. I want to try the current limiting option on this controller. So right now, it's charging at 1.8 amp. I'm going to try and reduce it down to 1 amp and see if it actually reduced the charging current. So we're going to go to program and we press down to D05. Right now, 6 amp. Press enter, and we're going to go down to 1 amp. All right, we're at 1 amp. Press enter to confirm. Now, let's go back to the main screen. Let's see if it would actually reduce the current. So when you limit the charging current, it doesn't actually reduce the charging current. It's just turning on and off the charging current so that it would spend less time charging the battery instead of lowering the charging current. If you look at the chart, it will look more like this, right? It will charge the battery for a short period of time and then it turns off for a short period of time and it will charge again and then turn off and then charge and then turn off. The amount of time is spent on charging the battery depends on how much current you want to limit. The more current you want to limit, the less time it will charge the battery. The less current that you limit, the more time is spent on charging the battery. If you don't limit the current at all, this line will be straight, but it's not at one amp. 
will be at the maximum current that your solar panel can put out. I'm going to go ahead and return it back to normal and see what we got. Let's increase it. Be back to 6 amp. And let's go back to the main screen. Let's see what we got. There we go. Charging at about 70 watts. 1.8 amp. Constantly. The thing about this charge controller is that it does not have an on off button. So you cannot turn it on and off. It does not have a stop charging button. So you cannot stop charging. The only way for it to stop charging is when your battery is full or you disconnect the battery. The only way for it to turn off is when you disconnect the solar panel or when it's at night when you don't have any more solar power. Then it will turn off everything even when your battery is connected. So at night or when you don't have solar input, this screen will be turned off. So you cannot see anything on the screen until you have solar input. Let me show you what happens when the battery is full. In other words, when it reaches the set voltage that you set it up earlier, the charging current goes down to zero. So it actually shuts down the charging process. When the battery is almost full, it actually reduces the charging current until the battery is completely full and then it would shut down to zero. I cannot show you when it's reducing the current because the battery is full right now or it's at 41 and a half volt, which is how I set it up. So let me go ahead and change. I'm going to increase the charging voltage to let's try um, 41.8 see what happens okay it's charging at the reduced current you see so it's been charging at 1.7 1.8 amp now when the battery is almost full it actually reduces the current this is actually different than when you are trying to limit the current this is actually continuous current charging it does not turn on and off like this and this current will continue to go down until your battery is full then it will go down all the way to zero you can see 0 0.8 now 0 0.6 amp now at a lower wattage 25.9 watts so it's actually changing from a constant current right so before just at 1.7 amp constantly until it reaches 41 point what so 1.8 which I just programmed and then it will change to constant voltage and the current is being reduced until it reaches a zero so that is pretty good this is the same characteristic of all lithium-ion chargers so what happens when the Sun is down let me simulate sundown by disconnecting the wires from the solar panel. Are you ready? Da da! The unit turns off completely even when the battery is still connected. So this unit will remain off and you cannot turn it on, you cannot change any setting, you cannot do anything with it until you have power coming from the solar panel input. This charge controller can also be used to charge an electric bike and that's the main reason why I bought this. On an electric bike, the battery voltage is usually around 50 volts and you cannot put so many solar panels on your bike, usually only one or two panels max. Each solar panel can only put out between 18 to 20 volts. So even when you have two solar panels on your e-bike, and that's pretty big for an e-bike, right? You only get around 40 volts from your solar panel. So you cannot charge a 50 volt battery without boosting it up. And that's why you need a boost charge controller to raise the voltage higher to charge your e-bike battery. Now let's go ahead and try this on my electric bike to see if it will charge my e-bike. My e-bike is 48 volts, so it has a charger 
that puts out 55 volts. So I have to match the voltage of the charger. So I have to raise this voltage up to 55 volts to charge my electric bike. I'm outside right now and I already hooked up my solar panel to my e-bike with the EcoWorthy charge controller. It's on my bike right now. I want to compare between this charge controller with that charge controller. See which one is more efficient. This solar panel is 130 watts, 12 volt. The open circuit voltage is about 22 volts. My bike requires about 55 volts to plug in the charging port. It doesn't go directly to the battery, it goes through the BMS. Right now we're charging at 52.1 volt, 1.42 amps. That's about 75 watts. I'm going to unhook the EcoWorthy and hook it up to the power meter. I unplugged the EcoWorthy and hooked it up to the power meter, charge controller, see what we got. 20 volts from solar panel, 52 volts output. Right now we're producing about 70 watts at 1.3 amp. It's very close to 72 watts. So I would say uh, between the two charge controllers, uh, they're pretty much the same. Right now we're producing about 70 watts. I'm going to use this and throw on the solar panel. And go down to zero. Let me remove the shape and the output goes right back up to 70 watts. So it does not take any time to reset itself. It goes right back up after the shade is gone. So that is pretty good. It's time for a teardown. I'm going to show you what's inside this unit. There is one thing about this unit that you definitely want to know if you own one of these. So let me show you what it is. Remove the four screws on the back and you can just pull the heat sink out. You got four more screws and this circuit board will come out. You got six MOSFETs here on the back of the unit. So if you have some problem with the unit, it's more likely problem with these MOSFETs because they are the source of heat that is connected to this heat sink here. If they overheat, they are more likely to fail. We also have a small temperature sensor right here. Here is the inside of the unit. We have a very large coil right here. This coil is the main problem I had when I first received the unit. The unit turned on, but it does not charge the battery. I didn't know what's wrong with it. I thought it was defective until I disassemble the unit and look at the coil. Let me show you the unit when I discovered the problem a few days ago. So this coil is loose, comes off the solder joints. I'm going to have to re-solder it together. So what happens was they cut the leg too short. You can see it doesn't even stick out from the back. Most of these are solder that I added on. The top part of the leg is insulated because this wire is insulated so it doesn't take solder. So only the bottom part of this wire is stuck to the solder and therefore it has a very small surface area to hold on to this solder joint and therefore it came loose very easily. I have to scratch off the insulation so that it can take solder from the top and also on the bottom and that will secure the solder joint a lot better and after I solder it back together it worked just fine and here is the close-up look of the main circuit board and let me show you the circuit board for the screen so there you have it power meter boost charge controller 
and it's fully adjustable to any voltage to just lithium ion batteries. So this is best for lithium ion batteries. It also works with lead acid battery and on the user manual this is the chart for the lead acid battery and let me show you the chart for lithium ion battery. This one is for lithium iron phosphate and this is for regular lithium ion and all this voltage here you can fully adjust down to 0 0.1 volt increments so that is very good you can charge literally any batteries with this charge controller just been charging my battery for about one hour at 1.7 amps and it does get warm on the back here on the heatsink so if you charge your battery at a higher current you probably want to install a fan or maybe put a bigger heat sink on the back here because it's going to get really hot and heat is the enemy of this charge controller and that's all for now folks for this charge controller I'm working on charging my electric bike with a solar panel I got some flexible solar panel I want to try it on my bike and I'm going to show you that next until next time thanks for watching